All right, so we're going to be watching Akiyama vs. Delial shortly in TTAC 15. And this is this is a big match. This is a really big one. If we um if we look at the bracket for a moment, I think I can flip you over. Give me a moment. I know how to make videos. I've done this before. If we look at the bracket, um, just from the starting bracket, my numbers said there were four players that combined to have a 70% chance approximately to win the tournament. That these four players uh, in a field of, you know, a little under 30, these four players are so good, they have that big a advantage, even though this is, I think, in general, a very strong field. And those four players who... Um, you know, it gave some of them better odds than others, but in general, whichever one you think is the best player or is in the best form or has the easiest bracket, I think would be very reasonable to pick. Its four players were Seto, Dalial, Akiyama, and Turds. Um, and any of those, I mean, obviously Seto and Dalial historically are the two super greats here, but Turds and Akiyama have been Truly tremendous players are on great runs, and I think have very reasonable shots. So these are a big four, and I think they are a really impressive big four, and they have all made the quarterfinals. None of them have been upset. Uh, were any of them close to getting upset? Not so far, though we'll see how the quarterfinals go. So... Or if they have, I just closed it and I don't remember. <laughs> so apologies to anyone that came close to upsetting someone. Blizzard was up almost beat Seto, but that's in the quarterfinals. Um, and it's currently tied 1-1. I don't know how that one will end. Uh, it's going into the open game. Obviously Seto is favorite, but Blizzard has played awesome. And I think Blizzard's main problem in the open game so far has been his hands have not been... Uh, his hands have given him problems that he's had to work his way out of. And he's done a really good job so far of working his way out of them. But that is a, you know, if you come in with a big disadvantage every game against Seto, like, it's it's really tough. Okay, so of those four players, Turds and Seto are in the top bracket and are set to meet in the semifinals should they not be stopped by Blizzard or Yevon. I love how Blizzard is playing right now. And Yevin was my most recent winner of Player of the Month as I record this video, and has been on an absolute tear, uh, including winning a TTN major. So, yeah, in incredible work right now from Yevin. But either of them could upset one of the big dogs. But looking at the bracket, those two were set to meet in a really huge semifinals. And if you ever just, like, log on in the middle of the day and click watch games, there's a very good chance you'll see Turds and Seto playing a closed trade game. They have played a lot of closed against each other, which I think will lead, if they face each other, to a really interesting set of closed games, because they are very familiar with how each other play. And so many of their games start with exactly cards in 1, 3, and 7. They tend to, whoever's first turn, play a lot of three corners against each other. So that'll be really interesting to see. If it happens. Uh, and if if Yevin or Blizzard upsets one of them, I will be very happy because those are fun players too. And I really like what they're doing, and it would be nice to reward either of them with a with a really impressive semifinals or better run. On the other half of the bracket, Tezuka has already advanced to the semifinals, and Delial and Akiyama, the other, you know, two really big dogs. And Tezuka, you know, has to be the fifth biggest dog. He is the reigning champion. Uh, but Delial and Akiyama are facing relatively early in the quarterfinals. So this is a huge match. Um, it's hard to say anyone's favorite over Tezuka right now, given that Tezuka has literally not lost a game in TTAC for years. And I, I mean, I don't mean like not lost a match. Obviously, he won the last tournament. I mean, he hasn't lost a game. He won every single decisive game he played and the TTAC he won, and he has won every game he played so far. He does not lose in open, he does not lose in closed. He's, he's on a pretty historic run. That said, I still think, you know, whoever of Delial or Akiyama wins, they're the favorite. If, if Tezuka can take them down, you know, what a, you know, incredible work. Uh, but this strikes me as, you know, 
very much a finals worthy match and uh, one of the huge ones of the tournament and whoever wins is in great shape moving forward and will have to have played really really well interestingly for me personally i would rather face delhi in ttac and akiyama in a pure open tournament i think that would give me better chances on both um which suggests that Akiyama is the stronger TTAC player. I don't particularly think that's true. I think I don't have a feel for how Akiyama plays closed. Um, and uh, the times we've played, he has certainly gotten the upper hand on me. And so I would be, I would be more worried there just because I have less of a sense of what he does. Um, I have no idea who's the favorite here uh, in my bracket, as I always do, or almost always do. I think once I picked Akiyama to win something, but I usually pick Deli All to win things, and I have done so again. And I, I think, I think he's very slight favorite, but I really don't know. I think Deli All has a really nice feel for synergies in his cards. And Akiyama has a really nice feel for choosing cards that aren't obvious fits in my mind, but clearly function really well as hands. Um, I think the quarterfinals of Triad Wars, uh, there have been a bunch of tournaments, like where, you know, there's kind of two high level cards and some lower level cards, and traditionally you make the high level cards opposite corners. And he just puts them on adjacent corners and it all clicks well, and he doesn't end up having directional weaknesses. So we're playing the closed. Uh, Delhi got first turn. I do not consider this a particular advantage. Uh, we have seen, we saw Tezuka win on second turn here, and I forget what happened, what the turn was for the Blizzard Seto game. But in general, without plus wall, second turn improves. Now, there's an old argument I have no idea how old. I first came across it after I played Kaustebener in the quarterfinals of, I want to say, S.E. Irvine? Am I making this up? I'm blanking, but it was the first turn. I, I think Irvine is right. It was the first tournament I, you know, it was the tournament I made the jump, right? I went from being like, a person who had never won any tournament games and was relatively new to the site, to I've made the semifinals of a major tournament and am considered like a promising talent. So, and then I lost in the semifinals to Scythe, I think, who went on to lose to Delhi in the final. Is that right? I might be confusing this. Something like that. Anyway, uh, Kaus, after the game, said he thought second turn had a big advantage. It was a split-level rule set, and basically second turn doesn't have to use one of their low levels or their lowest level, and first turn does. And I kind of disagreed, because I, I, think he play, I think he misplayed it a bit. I think you should generally start with your lowest level cards and make sure you hold higher level cards for later. And there's sort of a long time argument between people thinking uh, these split level sets are good for second turn because first turn must use all their low levels or good for first turn because you can put out stuff that is very easy to capture and you are guaranteed last turn on a board that will have a lot of low levels on it, giving your final card potential, more sweep potential. And I've, I've always been on the first turn is favored side. However, I have no idea if that's true in closed. So I know SPC is in general a pretty balanced closed rule set. I don't know how elemental affects that, and I don't know how split level affects it. Tezuka, for instance, met a weak corner by playing a 9-9 corner. Um, you must use one from each level, and I believe, let's look at the rules. Uh, this is important to know. Each card must have a 1 or a 2 on it. Yeah, no rares semis. Um, but each card must have a one or a two. 
And if you have a level eight that must have a one or a two on it, you're probably going for a nine nine corner or a nine nine of some kind, like a nine nine four two or nine nine five two or nine nine three two. You know, you could also go nine eight six two. That's the other thing that comes to mind. It didn't come to mind for me immediately, but I've since been corrected. And nine eight six two is a nice choice. And a card Akiyama has used in the past, so I kind of expect him to veer towards nine eight six twos here. But on average, you kind of and and Tezuka used a nine nine corner. And he played it as a response to the starter. And if you think about it, with no plus wall on, and with only one level 10, there was basically a good chance there was one A in the opponent's hand. And it was facing an element, so the A couldn't take from that direction unless it happened to line up with the element, which is really rare. Level 10s don't have a ton of elements on them. Um, so in, basically, the only way it could be taken is the 25% chance that the opponent of uh, Vid's 10 happened to be facing up. And I think it turned out that Vid didn't use a level 10. So in fact, I mean, obviously used a level 10, didn't use a level 10 with an A on it, though I, I'm not remembering exactly. So my point is, it turned out that the 9-9 next to an element was actually really strong and gave Tezuka a good position. And he went on to win that game because Tezuka always wins TTAC games, it seems. All right, Deli uses his level two. This is one of this is probably my favorite level two card. I believe there are two six five three twos. The other is Roman gold coin. That's a semi, so it's not allowed. Also, this is the only one that's a corner. It is a very powerful card. Uh, two five one seven is also a uniquely powerful level two that is always interesting. And Delhi used quite effectively against me. Came very close. I was very lucky to hold the tie against him in a game we played in um, Triad Wars, like quarterfinals, uh, when he used 2517 in nine as his starter. All right, Akiyama goes for the weak corner. Now, again, we gotta adjust for the fact that this is not our usual rule set. But I think this should favor first turn. I think Delhi has some advantage here because that is an easy card to take, right? Let's say he started with his level two in the corner, one of his powerful cards faces. Maybe his level 10. Maybe he has like... I mean, I, I always assume he's going to use Cypher. Uh, so Cypher doesn't face it. But, you know, some like say an A946 or something. That's got a really good chance to sweep whatever comes out now. And I would probably be thinking, take my level four and drop it in a weak corner as well. Seven or nine, maybe eight. Eight is also possible, but probably seven or nine. And just say, I'm going to have powerful cards and there's going to be nothing hard for me to take. Because in general, if no combos happen and first turn can take every turn they want to, and second turn can also take every turn they want to. Triple Triad is a game where first turn wins by force. Second turn wins by either stopping first turn from having a capture they want, uh, they tie or win, by either having a capture, uh, making sec first turn need a capture they don't have, or in some way compelling first turn to play a structurally incorrect move. Or combo potential. Here, None of that is threatened to happen yet. So I would assume that first turn has an advantage. Okay, on the other hand, Delhi has made a structural concession here. Akiyama will be the first person to lock in a card, but we can also see the power of the 9-9. Nine -nine. And we can see it pretty clearly here, because unless there is a 9 or 10 facing up with a plus 1, that Quetzalcoatl's not going to get taken. Now, it's still a little scary. The downside of this is, say Akiyama plays four. If he sets up a plus in five, that's really scary. And it's hard to know whether that plus has been set up. So often you are forced to block five anyway, which kind of gives up the advantage that Quetzalcoatl has created. On the other hand, the upside of a move like this is he is making the game almost entirely upward, and Quetzalcoatl's just not a card you want in your hand if the game is upward. And Delhi is very likely to have a lot of power facing the action, and the game will be around the action once there are cards in 1, 2, and 3. 
Uh, Dully has played two cards with twos facing up. I will assume the entire rest of his hand is quite powerful facing up. But it might come down to whether Akiyama has something in five or not, or whether Dully all feels compelled to block five. Another thing, though, is let's say Akiyama plays like 7 1 3 1 in four, right? There's no chance he's setting up five. So let's say he plays something like, I don't know, uh, 5 5 2 3 in four, something like that, that might set up five. There's some risk that Dully has that combo too. And if he does, you can be in a lot of trouble pretty quickly. And it can be hard to work your way out of trouble with no plus wall. There's just so many, there's just significantly less combo potential. So I think it is, in a sense, unsurprising that Akiyama played his first move very quickly, but is taking his time on this one. You know, it's a seven minute game, and, uh, you know, Seven minutes is 420 seconds, so Akiyama has already taken over two minutes, which is certainly a serious thing from him, two and a half minutes. Uh, obviously, I would not consider this, you know, a super long think for uh, for most players, but for Akiyama and enclosed, I think it certainly qualifies as you have to figure something out. He goes for the capture in six. What are the odds this sets up a plus or same in five? And also, he used his level 8. So Akiyama has a 10, a 6, and a 2 remaining. So he's probably thinking, I can use my 10 and my 6 in the next few turns. This suggests his 6 doesn't have much up power, or you'd probably want to use the 6. Or, if he did use the 6, maybe it has to go in 4, and maybe it was likely to set up a plus. This is the hardest thing for Delial to combo. It probably doesn't set up five. It's hard to think it sets up five. Uh, if, like, Nuge is the level 10, that would set up five. We do know the card, ha the level 10, has to have a one or a two on it. So does the level six. So if the level six is like a 1883, that seems so unlikely to me. Uh, 1838, I don't think that's the case. The level 10, what level 10s are there? Um, 2-9-A-6 kind of thing. Nuge. Nuge is the card that strikes me as vaguely plausible. Uh, is Jack 1-8-8-A or 1-A-8-8? I think it's 1-A-8-8. So not many cards that plus in 5, but an interesting call for Delhi here. Do you block 5 or do you not? I don't know. If you don't block five, one tempting thing is to go in four, because that kind of locks in a card. But if that then gives them five, you just like lose on the spot. Uh, so that's pretty rough. I think the choice is five or nine. I'm actually coming around to kind of like this move from Akiyama. If, if Delhi feels obliged to block five. If he goes nine, I'm not sure what's happening. This is going to be messy. Yeah. Um, now, I no longer think Delhi has, you know, Cypher in his hand. I don't think he's playing Cypher and Quezacoddle. But Squall would be a very plausible card. I think the nine... Uh, no, it wouldn't, because it doesn't have a one or a two. So, of course, he's not running Cypher. What am I talking about? Uh, 9982 has been a pop... Oh, 9289. Shu Yen. Shu Yen has the same in five. Chu Yin has been a very popular selection so far. There is a card that has been chosen a lot that has a same in five. You have to block five. And Akiyama would play Chu Yin in 8962. Some people wouldn't. They'd play 8962 as the level eight with an opposite corner for the level 10. But Akiyama plays adjacent corners. Um, okay. Now, that doesn't mean he 100% has five. But if it's like 50%, I still think you have to block five. He blocks five. And you'll note he, he does have cards with like high up value on it. So Delhi has saved his level four and ten. Two and three are basically locked in. There's a chance Akiyama does not have that much going up here. He's used two cards with pretty decent upward power. Uh, maybe he doesn't have Shu Yin. He did play Zagnol, which is a corner for nine. He might play two corners for that, but he might not. Hmm. I'm not sure. I think Delhi should block five there. 
like whether or not Akiyama has Shuyen, we're making a call on the probability of it, and I think the probability of it is high enough that you have to block five. What are the odds Akiyama has a plus or same in four? I'd think low. I mean, like very much non-zero, but not high. Okay, 818A. Uh, he did not have Nuge, he did not have Shuyen. Fair enough. Tough spot for Delhi now. So you use the level four and you try to set up your level 10 as sweeper, but what is Delhi's level 10? Is it a card for seven? Is it a card for nine? Now we just saw a card that's sort of for nine, but it could count as for seven as well, right? We've seen corners for one, three, and sort of seven or nine. Sort of cards for one, three, and eight right now. And that leads me to think there is more up power remaining in Delhi's hand, but it's not, but probably more left than right, given the Quetzalcoatl's strengths. So maybe you go eight? Hmm. Eight's very scary. And it's over. <laughs> okay, so Delhi went in. Oh, Delhi had the plus in eight. Delhi had Barrett. He, he mentioned. I thought I was talking and I was saying A962s, what other options are there? There's a, oh, you can't, uh, things like Nuge or A828s. And Delhi was like, I kind of think A972s are good. And I was like, wait, there are A972s? Because I couldn't think of any corners. Um, I should have been thinking of A971s because boss people love that. But he did mention Barrett specifically. And yeah, so he plays Barrett 8. Akiyama has to play the double capture four, and Delhi has, happens to have the combo at the end for additional pain. But after comboing in eight, he is already up eight two. It's a win either way. Yeah, so huge win for Delhi here. Uh, Barrett landing really strong. So you can see Delhi sort of went four corners with Barrett as a utility card. And he set the game to go up with his Quetzalcoatl in two. And he was quite lucky to have the plus an eight. And Akiyama was quite unlucky there. But as we saw with Shu Yin, forcing every card to have a one or a two means this kind of stuff is possible. Even if Akiyama should certainly feel pretty unlucky here. So uh, huge congrats to Delhi there. I'm going to send him a congratulatory message. Um... Suddenly it was 9-1, and I didn't understand what had happened, just as I was thinking, Akiyama's in good shape. Um, and he almost was. I'm clicking the wrong things. Uh, what a... What a turn for my evaluation of the position. Uh, Delhi takes game one. Why won't Discord work? Trying to get over to the chat. Um... But uh, huge win. Uh, I want to reiterate, I think there are four players who are clearly the best right now. Um, there are some inactive players who might have a chance to break into that group. Uh, it might be that Tezuka just obviously deserves to be there, and I am underrating him. But I think there's a big four, and none of the big four have been knocked out. Maybe a big five. And if there's a big five, none of the big five have been knocked out either. And Delhi versus Akiyama is the first matchup of the Big Four. But you could argue the biggest matchup of the Big Four. Though you could also very much argue not that. So, uh, huge win here in the closed. I think a lot of matchups kind of pivot on the closed. Maybe the open closed. Yeah. When I, in um, TTAC 14, when I won the closed against Piggy, I thought it was over. I was really confident at that point. Or I won the open closed. I won one of the open closed or the closed. And I just thought, I, I think it was the open closed. Um, 
I just thought, okay, I've got that. Now I can lose the closed, but if I win the closed, it just ends. And if I don't win the closed, I still have the open and I don't think I'm going to lose there. And then I got crushed there, absolutely destroyed. So maybe this is a bad example, but uh, I think he played great. All right, I think they're going to stop for today. Huge win for Delhi. He takes the lead. I don't think Akiyama did anything wrong here. Um, I think this is just how, how games go. Obviously, I root for Delhi, and I am happy about this result. I'm really excited to try to catch the rest of their games, uh, especially because they will be veering more towards open. Um, also, I can't believe I forgot that like Delhi had basically said he was going to use Barrett. And if I had realized he was going to use Barrett or like there was a good chance he was using Barrett, I would have thought instead of he screwed, like, wow, he just got this. Um, but I did not realize it all pieces together. And yeah, big first match, big first match, still very winnable for Akiyama. You, uh, Delhi says like he thought there was going to be an A to the left coming there and Barrett had it well controlled. And if there's not an A to the left, 6732 can take a bunch of things. Not, not high number things, but a bunch of things. And then Barrett's going to sweep the up down there with that two facing to the left. Well, nicely done by Delhi. Big win. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see more. I think the next match that will happen is, my guess is this match continues tomorrow, so that will probably be the next video. And I think the other two matchups, Turds Yevon and Seto Blizzard, are both going to happen over the weekend. So I would expect the next video to be more of this matchup and for the other matchups to finish or start after that. All right.